Today we're dipping back into my 2012 Burgundy stash. Welcome back to Drinking It In. I am your host, Chris Cassara. We are here to help you know more and drink better. And today we are uh, drinking something special. 2012 Domaine de Chazeau, Chambeau Musigny, Le Charme Vineyard. I wonder, so you got the uh, name of the domain and you got the actual wine. This is the cork, kind of neat. I'm wondering if this uh, is something that they're doing to uh, try to prevent fraud, which, you know, is, uh, I don't wanna say running rampant, but it's probably more common than, um, than, we, uh, than we know. Um, so this guy, if you remember back a couple of months ago, I tasted a, uh, a 2012, I think it was the Gevre, Gevre Champartin from the same uh, producer, 100% Pinot Noir, and in this case, this guy is a, um, it's from the village of Chambord, Chambord Moussigny. Make fun of my French in the uh, comments. Um, and this uh, Premier Cru Le Charme vin Vineyard is uh, one of the top vineyards that, um, um, you know, uh, top of the Premier Cru in this, in the Moussigny, uh, Chambord Moussigny, Appellation. So it's something that is, I mean, it's a very, it's a very special wine. Now this is not a Domaine Leroy, Leroy um, which the bottle is like $6,000. If it were, uh, we wouldn't be drinking it. We would be uh, selling it right now. Uh, this one, I think it, this one is uh, more affordable, still probably at least, um, you know, for current releases going to be closer to $200, but um, you know, not 6,000. So, uh, you know, that's good. Now, I again I tasted I had I did a tasting with the um, with a whole range of wines from this domain uh, walked out with the Gevre Chambertin this one and there's one more upstairs um, that I'm, I'm not sure which uh, Premier Cru it, it is but uh, we'll be tasting that relatively soon now Chambeau Musigny is uh, one of the I guess lightest most delicate um, more of a, uh, I guess, a more feminine of the appellations in the Cote d'Or in Burgundy. See, see that little fruit fly, it's annoying the hell out of me. Uh, so we'll see. We'll put that to the test today. Um, I don't remember if if this wine was something that I recalled as you know floral and delicate, but you know, 100% Pinot Noir. Very excited to taste this right now. So let's see what we get. Fucking son of a bitch and little bastard. Sorry, I wasn't supposed to uh, curse on the channel. They're getting in the way of my enjoyment. The stupid, was one fruit fly haunting me. This is, um, it's quite nice. I'm not going to say it's intoxicating because I'm using that word too, word too much. But it is pretty. It is um, it is light. Um, definitely floral. And I'm getting much more. Um, I'm getting much more floral notes than uh, fruit. Right there's there there are is a what I would say is a raspberry note is is predominant in this wine, but it's it's more floral, perfumey, um, with like sort of like a, a crushed dried leaves in some ways too. I almost wanna say this is, I mean, I guess if you think about it, floral, kind of dried crushed leaves. I wanna say, I'm, I'm gonna also say a little mushroomy. It's possible, I mean, this is a 10 years, 10 years from vintage, right? So, you know, they can take on some of those more earthy flavors. Um, this has a much more lively nose than the Gevre Chambertin we tried in the prior video. Um, without tasting it, I can, I can tell you that I'm gonna enjoy this a lot more than that one. And I did enjoy that one after finishing the whole bottle. All right, let's give this a taste.
it is silky and um, becomes much more cherried uh, on the palate. Nice. Enough acid still, you know, not, not, too, not too tart. Cherries, raspberries, cranberries. Fruits coming through on the palate. Most of those floral notes blew off. Not getting the earthiness. It's not, it's, it's very good. This is really good. It's a treat. It's certainly a treat. This wine, the bottle's only been open for about two or three hours. So what I might do is, um, I don't know whether I'll film a video, but definitely taste it tomorrow. I'm not going to come near finishing this today. I might taste it tomorrow and even on, uh, even on day three, see um, how this evolves. But this is gorgeous. And um, I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad I, I'm going to keep this cork, right? It's very cool. I was, when I, when I sort of put the corkscrew in, I was like, what the hell is going on here? Clearly that's on purpose. Yeah, it's a good one. There's also a cherry pit in here. So I'm getting cherries, cranberries, raspberries, cherry pit. Because there's a touch of bitterness at the end. Finish is really, is, is pretty long. Still going, right? Now, as it sits in my mouth, it turns a little plummy, right? So it gets, it gets a little darker. So it starts off really bright and red. As we get through the, through the uh, experience, we get more purple, purpley in, um, in our plums. So I'm done here. I just wanted to thank everybody for watching. Thank everybody for mocking my French and Italian uh, pronunciation. And uh, hope that all of you who are not subscribed will subscribe and keep coming back. I appreciate the love and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Okay, so this is day three of this wine. Um, I didn't film yesterday, but yesterday I tasted it and it had gotten a lot uh, bigger than day one. So it was really dark black cherries. It got some of those baking spice notes came, come, came in and, and just the wine was just fuller. So that was interesting. It, it led me uh, to think a bit about how I consume um, old Burgundy. That maybe it's, I shouldn't, well, I'll, I'll get to that. So day three, It's, um, it's probably past the point of, of may, uh, maybe I should have thrown this in the fridge a little bit, you know, be, so that it preserved it a bit. Definitely getting much more uh, plummy. Um, um, the black cherries, right? So it was red cherries on day one, black cherries yesterday. Today, it's much more plummy and uh, a little almost pruney. So probably not gonna enjoy this as much. Mm. it's actually still pretty damn good um it's, it's interesting though like the more that i think about it i've been struggling with uh older burgundy not that i drink it all the time but i've had a few bottles in my cellar when i opened them up i was a bit underwhelmed and now i'm just thinking that i need to give them more time or maybe do a decant on these um these red burgundies and uh, you know, right off the bat, and then I would have a much more enjoyable experience. So that's something I'll keep in mind. I've got one more bottle of this guy. It's not the La Charme, but it's um, I think it's an even more prestigious uh, vineyard, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, we'll see. You'll see probably in a, in a few weeks when I open it up. But I think with that one, I'm going to decant it because, in terms of the arc of how I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed this wine. But on day one. I was like, yeah, it's nice, but you know, is it worth buying, you know, spending the money, aging it for 10 years to have this experience? No, but day two and three, perhaps. Hey, if you're uh, out there and you're not subscribed, please subscribe, it would mean a lot to me. I'll see you guys soon, cheers.